Okay, welcome back. This is video two of my four-part video series on sending IoT data directly from your ESP device to API Gateway and then pushing it through Lambda to S3 and then later doing a static web host for visualization. Pretty cool stuff. So last time we designed a Lambda function and we have a bucket in AWS where we prove that we can send data to via this test function up here. So let's go ahead in this lecture and create an API gateway URL with the deployment that's public and then add an API key for more security to a second deployment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open a new window and within the new window, I'm gonna go to API gateway. And again, I wanna keep all these microservices consistent in the same region. Go ahead and create an API. Now here's the newest HTTP API. WebSockets, there's a bunch of different ones. I'm going to use a traditional REST API and it's going to be public. It's not going to be a private VPC one. So go to the REST API and go ahead and hit build. And we can give this whatever name we want. So I'll just keep this kind of consistent as a REST API, a new API, and I'll call it test API. And use it 78 for the date. I'll keep the endpoint as regional. I'm not going to put a description for now and go ahead and create your API. So I'm going to go ahead and create a method, and the method I want to create is a git, a restful git, and go ahead and hit the check here. Great. Now I'll go ahead and fill this out. I'm going to connect it to the Lambda function we just made, and I'm going to keep it in US West 1, that's Northern California. I'm going to use proxy integration. That'll save that integration response. It'll make things a little bit cheaper and faster. Although when I say cheaper, we're only sending a few requests here, which is going to cost less than one hundredth of a penny. But this will be a little bit faster, and then we don't have to mess around too much with course headers. So let's integrate the function we just created, which is my test function there. Keep the default timeout. Go ahead and save this. Awesome. So this is pretty much all done. This is going to be the world's simplest API until I add some security here. Go ahead here into the method request, look this over, and I'm going to keep the API key requirement as false for this, but you're going to say I'm going to change that in a second. Okay, the very next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and enable cores on this. And for cores, I want to do something a little bit different. Because we're sending our data from an embedded device, we don't have a standard set of control headers. So I'm going to delete all these. I don't want to mess with these headers. And that's the only difference I'm going to make. We don't need this options, but it's on by default. I don't need a response. We're not going to have a response for this. And that's going to send us a little bit of an error message, but it doesn't matter. I'll show you what the correct error message is and the incorrect one is when they come up. So just get rid of these control headers, keep everything as it is, and enable cores. And it's going to check everything but one of these boxes and replace these existing values. And this is awesome. We have this X here, and that's exactly what we want. Now, the final thing we have to do for our publicly facing URL is deploy it. Remember, until we deploy it, we don't have a valid URL. So deploy your URL. I'm going to call this a new stage deployment A. That's normally my traditional names, and that'll just be our first deployment. Great. And now we have our URL here. So what I want to do is right click this. Open a new link in the tab over here, and it's going to give us internal server error. And again, that's because I haven't given a response. This is actually working, and I'm going to prove to you that it's working. So I'm going to add in a query string directly to my browser window here. And how you do that is I'll say question mark to start my query screen. Temp equals 44 ampersand for a second variable. I'll just say humidity equals 55. So go ahead and enter that. And now when I come back to S3, I should actually have two new readings. One reading when I first opened that browser window, that'll have nothing in it. And a second reading when I have my two variables for temperature and humidity. So I'm going to come back here to test folder. And indeed, you may have to hit refresh for these two readings to appear. So this one's going to be empty because I just opened the browser window. But this is the last one I created 20 seconds later. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one. So I'm just going to click it. And again, this is still a private bucket, so I'm going to go ahead and download it. And let's see what it looks like. And it may look a little different than you suspect. So I'm going to show it in folder and then open it again with Notepad++. You can open it in VS Code. That's probably what you're using if you're a developer. And look at this huge data blob I'm getting. This is everything added by API Gateway. And if you remember in Lambda, and I'll show you that in a second, 
I went down to the nested structure and grabbed query string parameters out. And the reason I did that is I don't want all this stuff. I just simply want the temperature and humidity and then in the sketch I'm going to add uptime. So let's go look what the temperature and humidity is out of this data blob. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to try to remember what I put in. I put a 55 and a 44 in there. So I'm simply going to come back to my window over here, look for 55. And there it is. So indeed I have my, I have to find it again, humidity is 55 and temperature is 44. Confirm that that's indeed in there. And then what I can do is kind of refine this a little bit. So what I'm going to do next, close this out, come back to my Lambda function. And remember I pushed the whole event object through. Now I'm just going to comment this out. Pushing the whole event object, which is the whole data payload, was fine when I just used this test function and had that small JSON packet. Now it's not too cool because I'm using API Gateway and I'm getting all that extra data, which I don't want. So I don't want that. So I'm going to on comment this JSON stringify the event query string parameters because that temperature and humidity are two variables held in the query string parameter section. Great. Go ahead and save that. And now we're going to go ahead and test this again. So I'm just going to resend this information, get a new data packet, go back to S3, test folder. Now I should have that additional data object when I refresh this. Indeed, there it is. Open this in Notepad++. And now look how much easier it is. It's just going to have that query string parameters I sent from my browser URL, or later on it's going to be my whole data payload coming out of my Arduino script on my ESP device. Awesome. Good job. All right, we're halfway done. Now the only thing I want to do is you've probably realized this deployment URL I have is completely insecure. If anybody gets a hold of this, I don't have any security. Anybody can start filling up my bucket with whatever they want. That's not a huge deal. I mean, they're going to have to send gigabytes of information before it really starts costing me much. But nevertheless, there's two ways we can kind of control the cost on that. One is to throttle our request and burst, which I'm going to do in my usage plan next. And the second way is just to provide that API key along with the usage plan so they don't have any access at all to my publicly facing URL unless they have that API key. And if you used other kind of third party data visualization sites for IoT like Locent, UBDots, or Things Speak, they all deal with API keys. So API key security is a very relevant way to control cost and control security when dealing with IoT. So let's go ahead and do that by coming back to API Gateway. And I don't have to do much, but there are a few things I have to do. So the first thing I have to do is change this to requiring a API key. So I'm going to go to method execution, method request. See how it says API key required? It's false right now. Now I'm going to change this to true. Click it on. Now before this can take effect, I have to redeploy this. I don't have to go back and change the course header, but I do have to redeploy this. So I'm going to deploy it as a new stage. And I'm going to call this one instead of deployment A, deployment B. And this one is going to require an API key. And I'm going to show you how this works. So go ahead and deploy it. There's our new URL with deployment B. And now when I open this URL, instead of it saying internal server error like it did here, it's going to say forbidden. The reason it's saying forbidden, you probably know the answer to this, is I don't have an API key. We're going to do that next, and that'll be the end of the lecture after we complete that. Now, this deployment is public facing. It still works. So if you want security, you may want to go ahead and delete this deployment on API Gateway. This one, I want to associate a usage plan and an API key in the headers so we can make use of this deployment B. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come back here to API Gateway. Go to Usage Plan and make a new plan. So go ahead and Usage Plans Create. And I'll call this API Key Plan. Not a very good name. And you can throttle it right here. So even if someone gets a hold of your API key, they can't go crazy. I'll say I'm not going to need more than three requests a second for a prototyping experiment. I'll keep the burst to three. And let's go for 333 requests per month. That's super low. Even if I was in the thousands, this would probably be like five cents. So big deal. Go ahead to next and add an API stage. We're going to first add our API we just created. That's it. Test API 78. That's the one we just created in this lecture. 
and I only want this to take effect for deployment B. Now it's worth noting, I don't have to redeploy this after I finish this because this is just data being held on the server side. After I flipped that key to require an API key, I did have to redeploy it, but most tutorial walkthroughs will act like you have to switch that and then do your usage plan and then redeploy it. You don't, you can just flip the key, redeploy, and then any time later I can add a usage plan to a previous deployment without redeploying it. So that's the good news. Before I can go next, I have to click on message throttling. I'm not gonna configure that, I already have. Go to next. And now I wanna create the API key and add it to this usage plan. So I wanna click this box. Don't click this box. So go ahead and click that. And now I'm naming my API key, API key 78. And I'm gonna auto generate it. Go ahead and save it. And now I'm gonna right click this and open a new link. I could do this later, of course, too. But before I do anything, I wanna say done. And now I'm done with this, but I do wanna know my API key. So I'm gonna open that box. I just right clicked API key and show it. Awesome, we're gonna need that in a second. Now, if I come back to that deployment B that's forbidden, it's still gonna be forbidden. But what I wanna do now is copy this. I don't need the HTTPS part anyways. And now one thing is with these API keys, these API keys are added to the header. So what does that mean? It means I can't test a URL secured with an API key from a browser window. I actually have to use a testing device. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Postman. Hopefully you have Postman or curl. I'm just gonna show you how to do that in Postman. So open up Postman if you have it. And I wanna make sure this is a Git request. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in this and make sure I'm deployment B. If I was on deployment A, I would get this internal server message error because I don't have a coded response, but it would work. It would push my data to S3. As it's this deployment without an API key, this is my old API key. You can see when I send this off, it's gonna say forbidden. So if I don't have an API key or I have the wrong API key, I'm still gonna get forbidden. Now, something that's important to note is make sure you're in the headers tab, not the parameters tab. If you try to add the key, to the parameters tab, it's not gonna work. Go back to your headers tab, click on and say X API key. That's the way in the headers it has to look. And one thing that's gonna make it easier, it does not have to be capitalized or lowercase. It's not case sensitive. So whatever you say X dash API key, you're fine. So that's good news. So now I have to put the valid value in this box. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way I'm gonna do that is just come back over here and go where I had showing that API key. And I'll delete this later so you guys can't use my API key. Nice try. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. This is not Linux, so I can paste this right in here, enter. And now when I send this, boom, I get that internal server error message I'm looking for. And I can also put a query string in here, just a fake one. How about just that first variable FJ, send that off again. And then the last thing we want to do is make sure that works. So I'm going to go back here to my S3 bucket, to my test folder, and I'm going to need to refresh this. Good. I got those two bogus things I just sent from Postman. And again, I can go ahead and open this, download it because it's still a private bucket. Open this up in Notepad++ or Vim or Emacs or VS Code or whatever editor you like. And there, I got that little bogus variable I just sent from Postman, FJ equals 99. All right, this is awesome. We're doing really well. We're pretty much done with this lecture. We created an API gateway with a publicly facing URL, but it requires for security that API key. It's tied into our Lambda, and that Lambda is effectively sending data to S3. So in video three, we'll work on our Arduino sketch. We're from our Arduino sketch on the ESP8266 or the ESP32 device, we can send data with our API key for security directly to API Gateway, and that data from API Gateway will get pushed through Lambda and sent over to our S3 bucket. So let's go ahead and do that in the next lecture.